Southern Maryland has a rich history dating back to the mid-1600s. Most people probably recognize Maryland for its prevalence of tobacco farming or for being one of the 13 original colonies. This important history has impacted Southern Maryland culture and shaped what it is today. A majority of the history in Southern Maryland has many paranormal occurrences or lore associated with it. In this documentary, we will be focusing on the history of the Dr. Samuel Mudd House and its historical, paranormal, and cultural impact it has on Southern Maryland. If you know U.S. history, you likely know of John Wilkes Booth. In 1865, Booth shot former President Abraham Lincoln in the back of the head at Ford's Theater, and Lincoln later died at the Peterson House in Washington, D.C. Booth, however, jumped off stage, breaking his leg. Booth fled the scene and managed to get to a doctor in Waldorf the next morning. He arrived at Dr. Samuel A. Mudd's house, where Dr. Mudd set Booth's broken leg. The origins of the Dr. Samuel A. Mudd house date back to the late 1850s. Um, Dr. and Mrs. Mudd were married in 1857, and as a wedding present, Dr. Mudd's father gave him 200 acres on which he could build a house. Uh, while that was taking place, Dr. and Mrs. Mudd lived at her brother's for about a year, and upon completion of the house, they moved in and began using it as their, their primary and only residence from that time forward. Uh, the historical significance of the Dr. Samuel A. Mudd House is that it's one of the few places on the Lincoln assassination escape trail that uh, visitors can come and uh, can interact and see the history. They want to experience and see uh, the artifacts that are original to the family and to the house. Uh, they want to be in the place where John Wilkes Booth was in those infamous hours in American history. Um, and really, the house allows us to tell many layers of Southern Maryland culture and history. Uh, we've been open for the last 36 years, uh, having visitors come here to be able to tour through the house and see the place where uh, Dr. Mudd set John Wilkes Booth's leg the morning after he assassinated Abraham Lincoln, and where he spent the, the next several hours resting before he ultimately continued on to the next leg of his journey. The Mud House is now a famous historical Southern Maryland site, a museum where people can take a tour and learn about the life of Dr. Mud and his encounter with John Wilkes Booth. However, some visitors of the Mud House claim to have witnessed unusual things while touring the museum and the surrounding property. There's a lot of people that will say that they feel like they've been touched. Uh, one of the stories we hear a lot are, are people being touched on like the elbow or on the shoulder. Um, there are instances where people have taken pictures of the outside of the house and they claim that they can see an image or a vision standing in one of the windows. Zero point field in quantum physics, that's the energy that binds everything together. So it creates gravity, makes this happen. It's uh, on a spiritual level, they would call it the creative force, God's grace. Uh, Native Americans would call it uh, Wakantanka, great spirit. Other people call it Holy Spirit. But it's you know, universally it's considered the creative force. So everything that happens is driven through the zero point field. So if you can step into that field, you're much more effective in communicating with those that have passed on. My very first visit there um, it was before I brought any of my daughters on the team. Uh, it was in the what we call the kids' room. So uh, the first experience for me was the interaction with the kids. We actually saw um, a little butt sit on a pillow on a chair, depressed. Um, we uh, actually saw, we laid out the kids' clothes, walked out of the room, nobody's in there. We came back up an hour later. It's shifted, it's moved. There was a, a little head uh, imprint on a pillow, things like that. So the kids, for, for me, um, they would literally, I would walk up to the door and I would introduce myself. Hi, I'm Patrick. I'm just here to communicate with you guys and see if you want to share any of your stories. And I'd put my hand out and see if anything would grab it. And you could actually feel the little hands grabbing your finger like that. It's really cool. Um, so even today, when we go there, we take groups. I stop at the door to that bedroom and I say, hey, we're back, you know who we are, and I got some friends with me. And if they like you, you'll get that, and then you can go into the room. 
One of the um, key aspects of the Dr. Mudd story is how controversial it is. Um, there, are, you know, there are people that are convinced that Dr. Mudd had nothing to do with what happened in, in Washington, that he you know, had no clue that John Wilkes Booth was going to assassinate the president, that he did not know who the man was when he was in his house, uh, all the way up through, you know, Dr. Mudd was as guilty as anybody. He should have been on the scaffold with the four who were executed. And that's really the, the fun part of the story. It took me seven years, but I finally got John Wilkes Booth to come out. I actually was in the parlor room. So we were downstairs and we felt his presence come through. And that was one of the times, that was the only time that I was not in the office, Dr. Bud's office, that I started to taste blood. And it was very interesting because I felt someone come up behind me and I felt this pressure on the side of my head. And it was like very tense. And I felt like this whole side of my body was tense here. And then I started tasting blood in my mouth. And it was, it was, it was really bad because I did not feel well and that whole side of my head hurt and then kind of like, kind of like cleanse off the energy. And so we did that and it was okay, but basically what everyone there felt like it was, was almost like a very small um, kind of recreation of a gunshot wound. So I was standing facing Dr. Mudd's office with my back to that window and my right side would have been facing the attic door to go upstairs and it was closed. We walked, or we were, I was standing there waiting and we had had a lot of aggression from what we knew were the co-conspirators um, that night, just verbally. And I was older by then, um, a couple years older at least. And all of a sudden I felt like this burning on my sides and I kept saying like it felt like someone was holding on to my sides. And we actually took everyone out of the house and went into the room and like I looked at my shirt and it looked like I had like four marks, like someone had gone like this down my sides. So I went out there and this was um, just past Halloween. I think it was the weekend or two weekends past Halloween because we'd had some bad weather. And I went out and they put me on the ghost box. And if you don't know what a ghost box is, it's a set of noise canceling headphones and it's hooked into this like AM radio and it's just constantly scanning frequencies and you have this constant static. You can't hear anything but what's in the headphones. You can't hear anything around you, just what's in the headphones. And the idea is to tune into the, the frequencies below the frequencies and see if you can hear words and just immediately say the first thing that comes to mind. They go to take me upstairs, and as I start up the steps, I feel this pressure on me, like uh, like a blanket or like a wall. There was there was something there, and you know, Patrick stopped me and asked me what I was feeling, and, and, and I told him, you know, like that. And um, he says, "Well, come on down the steps." I, I maybe gotten up like four or five steps. He said, "Come on down the steps, and I'll go up first. Cool. So he goes up the steps, I follow him, Emily's behind me, and the, the two people on the ghost box are behind Emily. Gets to the top of the steps, and as I'm getting to the top and getting ready to make the turn into the attic, the word brother wants to come out of my mouth. I hear it in my head like it was just shouted. At that exact instance, both of the guys on the ghost box spoke the word brother out loud, and I went, something's happening here. And there was just this, this this presence in the attic that was, I would describe as dark. Uh, we were going through the house and I felt fine like downstairs. And then um, we went upstairs and we went in the room next to the children's room. I started feeling a little bit uneasy, but it, it wasn't too bad. It was nothing like that uh, of concern. And then um, we went into the, the children's room and um, I remember our guide was talking about like um, everything that happened in there, like the ki the kids that he had, um, one of them passed away in there, and like all of a sudden, like it happened really, really fast. I just started like feeling like really, really dizzy, and like really, really nauseous, and it happened like very, very fast, like almost like I I couldn't even stand up. Like I remember wanting to sit down, and like it progressively, like it just happened so fast. I felt like really nauseous and dizzy. And then my, like, my mom's just telling me, like, get out of here. Like, you, you got to go. So my father was with me. So while the guy was talking, I told my dad, I was like, yo, look. I was like, I, I have to leave because uh, I felt so bad. And it's like right when I left, I started to feel better. 
and like the, and like it all happened like really fast in that specific room it's almost like um like a spirit was wanting me to feel something completely dark no lights um and they let us kind of roam the house a little bit and like me my friend and his older brother we went into the um like this room that was for the kids where he kept the sick kids and there was a rock there was like a cradle in the corner and we went in and we looked around and everything was like normal and we went down the hall looked in a couple other rooms we came back to the kids room and we're just standing in there and all of a sudden the cradle starts like rocking like really violently and we were like really confused we like ran out of the house and refused to go back in and we're just really creeped out and i i think it was definitely uh something weird going on these stories do align with what historians know about the people Dr. Mudd had interacted with. Even though a majority of people believe in paranormal activity, there are still a lot of people who are skeptical about the paranormal. If you put someone in a room alone and just have them wait for two hours and don't tell them anything, they would probably wait for two hours. But you, if you put someone alone in a room and tell them that it's haunted, something might happen. Um, and that's because, you know, the imagination is a really powerful thing. And the moment you tell someone this empty room is haunted, that room becomes a lot scarier. And then your, you know, your heart starts going, your adrenaline starts pumping, and stuff can happen. It's, a, it's an interesting um, photograph, and I think it's, it's um, really strong evidence to, like, the part of, like, the human brain that's really good at, like, pattern recognition. We're wired to, like, recognize and see faces. The pattern recognition part of my brain says, oh, this the, looks like there might be a reflection of a person wearing, like, you know, Elizabethan garb. Um, this could also just as simply be a um, reflection of, like, a, a passing car going down the road. Though it's been over 150 years since the most famous incident took place at the Mud House, it continues to have a lasting impact on Southern Maryland culture. I think it makes our area very specifically aware of the impact of the assassination of President Lincoln. I really do feel like there's a lot more information and just attention brought to the events following the assassination and the people involved, given we have like the Mary Surratt house and we have an entire trail that highlights Booth's flight down through Southern Maryland. Um, there are people, for the 150th anniversary, there are people from all over the country who came to see um, Dr. Mudd's house and the Mary Surratt house and the whole path that Booth took and the places that the conspirators and co-conspirators right. visited and where they planned the assassination. I think the paranormal aspect done properly makes it living history because you're actually bringing out the historical event through the eyes of the participants. And there's no way to experience history better than from those that actually created the history. So I think it makes it unique, the flight of the assassin is all through Southern Maryland. You know, you got from Ford's Theater, Dr. Mudd's, uh, Colonel Cox House, the Pine Field, St. Ignatius Church, and then bang, you're in Virginia, Jericho, right? So there's a lot there, and if you follow that trail, you can pick that history up the whole way. And, and if, you get, if you use the proper techniques, the evidence actually proves the history. We here at the house try to tell the story using the historical record that's available at the time and really allow our uh, visitors to leave here with more questions than they came with because we want them to go out and explore and research on their own so that they can continue to build their own opinion of what's happened here. I mean there's always more to what we see than what we see it's kind of my belief and, and I wouldn't completely discount it some stories I've heard I might because they're just way out there but some, you know, there's, there's enough there that says, hey, maybe there's something more going on here than, than just what we see.